welcome, welcome. Uh, this is uh, Digging in the Crates Hip Hop Podcast. I am your boy, the Hip Hop Wizard, uh, with my co-host. Uh, what's uh, Matt? What's up? What's good, Hook? What's good? What's 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 going on, man? When you coming coming down from Charlotte today? Man, same old thing, different day. But you know, we trying to get prepared for this weather that's coming through here. That's coming really, up. Really, really? Yeah, yeah. What? They talking about we gonna get some of that remnants of the hurricane. So. Other than that, same old thing, man. Same, same old thing. thing. That, yeah. That's what's up. Well, uh, again, welcome. We like to welcome our uh, special guest today, uh, OC from NC. What's, uh, what's, what's good, man? What's been going on, man? I'm making no noise, man. How y'all doing? Y'all good? Nah, you making good noise, man. You making good, good noise, noise, man. We yeah. we want to hear about it. I, uh, I stayed up last night breaking your lyrics down, bro. Yeah. Oh you yeah, know, yeah oh, man. Yeah. I want to. I, I want that. The, I want uh, that. I want that math problem, man. Yeah, you have to give me the in-depth analysis of that. Like, <laughs> how that win is. You know, okay, hey, show hey, that's what we do. We, we dig in, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah I dig so, it. I dig so, it. so, so how's everything? Your family and it's everything good, in Burlington is good, man. Um, everybody's great. The fam's good. You know, can't complain, man. Um, people listen to the music. Okay. So you know, yeah, that's, that's good, man. That's good, man. Uh, so, uh, so Mac, what's been, what's been in the news, man? You know, what, what's the, uh, what's going on, man? I know you got something. Ah, uh, man, I guess in hip hop news, uh, what's buzzing most is probably the divorce between Cardi B <laughs> <laughs> and Offset. Oh, really? Uh, uh, chirp, chirp, chirp. Yeah, yeah. Really? He's still wearing them furniture shirts, man. Hey, <laughs> I guess so. I saw something on the. Um, I think it might have been on IG. It said, I guess um, WAP don't help you keep your husband. But nah, I mean, I, nah, I don't. Oh, really? <laughs> what do I know, man? Fun I, fact. Fun fact. <laughs> yeah. Nah, it doesn't. It doesn't I doesn't. said, wow. Is how they going in on Cardi? <laughs> really? Is, is it an entanglement, uh, Mac? You uh, know, we. We got this entanglement going on. That's a yeah. thing now. Yeah. 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 Is it is it a thing, OC, the entanglement? Oh, it's absolutely a thing now. I don't know if, it, if that's that situation. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> it's a thing in general, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Wow, is, yeah. He, is he sleeping outside or inside, man? Ah, oh, man. Offset. Well, oh, is he be, riding on his big wheel? Choo, 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 choo. You know, he got way too much money to be sleeping oh, okay. outside. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> He a legend though. He did that shit where you know he pretended that um his phone was hacked. Last time. <laughs> he a legend for that. Like that's the dopest thing I've yeah, ever was. seen. Like that's <laughs> the smartest you ever. <laughs> OC, uh, what what was that like for you before we uh, get into uh, talk a little bit about Notorious? But what what was that like for you as an artist? Um, you know, in that kind of climate, being at the all the you know police brutality and things going. What what was it like for you? What kind of experience? Um, same as same as everybody, man. You know, you just kind of watch it and, and kind of try to keep your people out of the fray of most things. But when you're on the ground, and it's tough, man. You know what I'm saying? So it's crazy. Um, you know, because in Grand we did the the uh, the peaceful protest. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Okay. And ran into some combatants there. So um, I yeah, definitely I can that. see how it can it can catch fire real fast when you're actually on on the ground with it. Absolutely. You know yeah, yeah. I, I I saw that and I was uh. Yeah. Seeing that, uh, you know, the guy, uh, AJ, that got us from, from uh, yeah. MC that's from Greensboro. Yeah. You know, he was the one that was, you know, leading it up there. On, you know, he went to all the well side neighborhoods and like, yo, we here. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was, it was positive to see, but yeah. also the fact that, you know, local artists are, you know, getting their self immersed into, uh, into politics. Mac, what you think about that? I mean, I think it's a beautiful thing, man, because as much as we want to separate politics from sports and from hip hop, it's the reality is, is that you really can't. Like, it's going to affect you in some kind of way. So if it's going to affect you, then you might as well take a chance yeah. to do what you can to have things move in the direction that you want to see them move in. And people, you know, people usually move in the direction of the most powerful people or they look to those people for direction, you know what I'm saying? No doubt. In yeah. most situations. So. Unfortunately, yeah. it's Ja Rule sometimes. You know what I'm saying? He brought up Ja Rule. Football, you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, I'm saying, I'm general, not saying I'm just saying in general, sometimes it could be randomly anybody, unfortunately. Hey, Mac, you just bought him Ja Rule. Nah, he did. Yeah. Yeah. Is that your magic word, bro? Nah, he brought it up because once um, recently we were talking about Ja, did you see the commercial that he did when they were doing the uh, tough. I thought it was genius. Man, I did too. I said, <laughs> what commercial? Man, I didn't it. see that. Uh, the, you didn't the, see the, the commercial Euro he did with the yeah, yeah. with the Euros, man. Yeah, really? My Bristol's got the best mother guy rose, Jai Rose. You ever 
Snake your life. So good. Take more lip Yeah, it was tough. Uh, you should Google that. But you know what? You said it, it did numbers though. Like. Man, it just looks so clownish. Oh, it was terrible. Man. I, 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 I got to see that. You haven't yeah. seen it, man? Nah. Oh, yeah. Have you that, that, seen that. Snoop commercial with the Corona? Have you ever seen a man in a hurry while also drinking a Corona? No, you have not. It's, yeah. You can tell it was well planned. They gave him yeah. a script. It's cool. He looked like he's chilling. Yeah. It's nothing like this. is like some somebody shot with their phone. The phone. Oh, like, wow. hey man, we got 30 minutes. Let's shoot this real quick. Yeah, but on a, a more positive uh, thing, Biggie Smalls, uh, the actually the painting right here, the little crown thing. Mm -hmm. Um uh it was they had a sort of an auction and they were auctioning off stuff like uh uh his his hat, they was auctioning off boom boxes, they was auctioning That's off dope. Uh, salt and peppers, those those jackets they wore mm -hmm. in the video, and apparently uh, the memorabilia crown, Biggie Smalls crown, went for um, two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand dollars. That's crazy. That is that crown, bro. And I I can see that though. You know what I'm saying? Like man, I can see that. Yeah, and they had the signatures on there. That's they had, and they had they the had big signature on there. Yeah, and look, they had a. Uh, they had some love letters that Tupac wrote. I mean, like pages of it, bro. This on the news. Who was it to, though? Huh? Who was love letters? To? I don't know. I like to know. <laughs> was it to that lady that's uh, <laughs> entangled? Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> was the model, of course, was Who was, was the like, letters was to? We want to know. The, the gentleman that we have here, um, Mac. I could. I, I went to my cousin's house one day, and we were just chilling. Okay. And he was like, "Yo, come over, man. You need to check out this dope video." So mm -hmm. he always come up with stuff. So I was like, "All right, well, I'm, I'm on my way over there." So I sat down, and he was like, "Yo, check this cat out, OC from NC." So you know when you you OC from NC, you know, I'm like, "Man, okay, dude." He put the song, the video on high learning, and I went, <laughs> I went crazy. The sword making the chops right. Truth is, we can't make nothing to not like. Nigga, if that makes sense, top flight, these niggas playing and can't lift. We're finally getting used to getting change, I can't miss. Um, so just tell us a little bit about yourself and um, you know, of course, you did our grand opening back in two, uh, uh, 2018. Appreciate that. But well, we appreciate that, appreciate but bruh, that. No, your, that your lyrics is like, it's like, Mac, I wanted to break, break out my pad and pencil and be like, let's do a math problem real quick. Yeah. Um, so tell them, tell our viewers where you're from, you know, how you got started and, you know, a little bit, and then we're going to go through some of your lyrics and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm from Burlington, North Carolina, man, down the road and shit, you know what I'm saying? But, um, yeah, I'm country, man, country boy type stuff, you know what I mean? You know, mm -hmm. yeah. North Carolina, man. And, um, that's about it. We rap a little bit down there, you know what I mean? It's, it's so small, you kind of can't tell. It's, it's low-key, but we have a lot of talent there, man. Um, that's why we have songs like James on the album and, um, you know, Brandon Tate's from there. Um, so many people, like, dope people, whether it be in the arts or sports, are, are from that little town. And you might think they're from Greensboro or Durham or wherever, but no, I'm probably from right there. You know what I mean? <laughs> Low key, it's a, little, it's a little spot. But um, um, I think, you know, we always kind of could write. And I just, we just, I'm the one that got the attention at the right time, I think. You know what I'm saying? I, I, you feel cool. me? Yeah. So what what kind of inspired you as a kid? What You know, who were you listening to when you were coming up that helped you? Because your vocabulary is like, it's amazing, bro. I'm a nerd. That's one. That's one I was always, you know, like that. I'm going to chill. I'm going to chill. Y'all go ahead. You know what I'm saying? But outside of that, like the first music I heard just specifically dictated how I, you know, related to music on Heard Biggie Ready to Die first, second album was Nas Illmatic, third was third, Return to 36 Chambers, in that order, you know what I'm saying? Okay. And, and, and you know, okay. I'm just, when I moved to, bro, as a young man, I moved to Burlington, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten years old, but, you know, my first real introduction to hip hop here was those three projects in order. Okay. You can't really go backwards you like can. that, you know what I'm you saying? Can. Like, so, um, that's kind of how I write because of that, you know what I'm saying? Okay. And, and anything else kind of was below it, in my opinion, so. I think that kind of had a lot to do with the, the speed or the trajectory and, and what I was doing, you know what I'm saying, what I was putting down. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, you know, again, my favorite video is mm -hmm. OC from NC, Higher Learning. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, 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 he uses stuff from 
I mean, he used a, one song he used from the some uh, a clip from the Love Jones, the Love Jones movie. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But higher learning. I mean, explain how you came up with in higher learning. Uh, B squared ripping the sword, making the chop right. I mean, how do you? I mean, like I wanted to break out and be like, do a mat E equals B, B squared equals <laughs> equals F. I mean, that's how, and that's what it was. So it was a little math problem, but it was like B squared gripping the sword, making the chops right. I'm really referring, referring to like the NPC, the pad. Ah, like, okay. You know. Okay. He's, he's making the chops to the okay. beat right. You know what I'm saying? But. He's making the cut right, so he's you know he's gripping the sword, so I mean, he's making the cut right, so. Okay, close your eyes and feel the groove uh, groove changing. When you, when you said that in, the, in in higher learning. I think that was just a vibe type thing. Like I was digging that beat to that degree where it was like, you know, I'm about to tell you a story right here. Just take it in, you know what I'm saying? Put your arm out the window. Okay. Feel, feel the force. Okay. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Okay. One of those type of situations. You know. <laughs> I think it was more when I'm kind of bored. You got a lyric over there you want? <laughs> Man, I just, first, I just wanted to start off asking, how did you hook up with B-Square? That's what I wanted to know. A call center. Really? <laughs> really? Yeah, I tell you, I'm telling you, that's where everybody at. All the call centers. You want me some people? The call center. We, man. Instant, <laughs> dude, dude, the movies. All the motherfuckers working. Every one of them. Okay. Everybody comes from one of those. Okay, you know okay. But, but uh, nah, I, I think I met him there doing music but I knew like some of his family we from the same town and we put two and two together from the job like yo I, I think I know you da -da -da -da. he's like yo you do music I make beats check this out you know what I'm saying and um he let me hear some stuff it, was, it wasn't good you know what I'm saying just, <laughs> but, uh, but uh so B Square is the white guy right yeah yeah, yeah okay yeah, okay yeah, I'll yeah, make sure I had the right yeah. person that I seen but, in the um, video he's going through like just kind of letting me hear what I guess typical rappers ask for you know what I'm saying when uh -huh. came by and he just runs past his random beat, like a sample, old school type sample joint. You know? It's like, wait, go back, go back. He goes back to that one, man. I write it, like an hour later we record it. You know what I'm saying? Like, ah, and we've been working together ever since, man. It was one of those type of situations. So, dope, so mad dope. organic, bro. Right, and then <clears throat> another lyric from uh, Higher Learning is, my cousin said he quit banging because I'm too famous. Mm -hmm. I mean, what? because when, when I look at your video, I'm like, I could, I'm literally following you, like, yo, you know. Yeah, that's he, him. That's that's the dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah, but um, um, I think I was just I was making music all that time around him, and we could do whatever. You know what I'm saying? You know, cause who am I? You know what I mean? So I had different types of people that do different things. Mm -hmm. You know, around me all the time. But um, as time kind of progressed, and we got to like higher learning and started to get a buzz and we're in other cities and other states in California and I'm taking them with me and they're going with me everywhere. It's like, hold on, I'm like, put the camera down, bro. Yo, is the camera out? You know what I'm saying? Like, it was one of those type of situations where, hey, I'm gonna have to chill out on what I'm doing around you, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I think that's what that ball was about. So yeah, yeah, and then let's move on to the next video, Stay. Mm -hmm. To the last ball, my chest gone. The ones from the small booth with less room. I was at Doug Gray's crib and grave in a black hole that could make his basement cave in. A um, whole bunch of tracks who know when the train is coming. What, what do you what do you mean by that? When you say the train is coming, where, where do you where do you think hip hop is at? Uh, well, where did hip hop for you come from, and where do you think it is think it is now? Um, I think it came from you know what I'm saying a place of knowledge and and real you know, understanding about people, you know what I'm saying? I think that's what it originated from, or at least that's what I loved about it. Whether it be a storyteller telling me about two dope boys on the block mm -hmm. or, or his dead mother or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think it always was about learning more about the next man, you know what I mean? And um, building with each other. So I always, always kind of listen to it for those reasons, you know what I'm saying? So as, as times progress, we all know that ain't quite what music right. is about right now, right? Mm -hmm. right. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I think, I think for a while, for a while, for definitely for me, you know, maybe before 2014, 2015, I just, music kind of turned me off, just, just on the strength of like the direction it was going in, okay. whether it be local mm -hmm. radio stations or, you know, you know, not, no knock to them or anything like that, but um, whatever the machine is, is deciding <laughs> to, to, for us to listen to or for my kids to hear in the car <laughs> on the way to school, just didn't, it wasn't doing it for me, so 
I didn't dig the radio and I, and I wasn't really even thinking about making music, but when it was time to make music, I was like, you know, I'm gonna only make this that I wanna make. Nobody's gonna influence that or change my opinion on it. Nice. These are the tracks. Get here when you get here. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. and, and I think that's kind of where that ball was going to to kind of come back to what you're saying. Like, we put the tracks down. You you can come up this motherfucker if you want to. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's kind of right. on you. You know what I mean? Right. Like, and that's kind of the vibe. Right. And then also, because uh, I'm a big history buff, mm -hmm. in the year we'll be ass tacking, I took the fire out the cave and left the mask breath breathless. That's a little bit of, that's deep right there, man. Mm -hmm. Nah, the line is, um, in the end, we all ass tacking. Okay. Like, in the end, but like, Indian, we all ass tacking. Right. I took the fire out the cave and left the mass breathless, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's that's the boy, you know what I'm saying? Like, basically saying, dope. I created, dope I created something, words, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I created something here that's gonna shock everyone, kinda, you know what I mean? I think that was the one, but the Indian, we all ass tacking was kinda um, the lead in. So, mm -hmm. Dope, dope. So, some of your other, uh, you know, your other albums mm -hmm. that you got, take us through that. Like, we talked about how I learned, what about some of your albums as we lead up to it? Crown one. Uh -huh. what's, what's one of your ones, ones that you know you, you really put your heart and soul to it before you even got to making the out the record Crown War? All of them. 2014. <laughs> all of them, bro. Okay. <laughs> 2014 um, is the first like project where I said, okay, watch, I'm going to be for real. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it's a mixtape. You can go probably go find it on Band Camp or something like that. You know what I'm saying? But um, How I Learned Him was the first real album mm -hmm. right after that. That was okay. obviously me, me and B Square. Um, and then we did the second Renaissance, yeah. which is amazing. If you haven't heard it, oh, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You might want to check that out. Yeah. Um, and got a lot of you know acclaim from that one. That's what kind of got us to California, got us in Texas, kind of got us to tour and whatnot and, and move around a little bit. And um, obviously we got back in 2018, we dropped, you know, it's not true, it's me at the end of the year. And that has, you know, like this people you speak of, the work on Ninth one, mm -hmm. Sean Don, Cahill, mm -hmm. um, Median, uh, Everybody from here that's dope, you know what I mean? Right, Jay right. Glenn, mm -hmm. um, and we kind of work with the people here that understood, like, okay, this guy, he's on the level, I guess, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. we'll, we'll, we'll try to help, yes. you know what I mean? And um, those projects, you know, kind of got us where we are now. And, uh, and man, after listening to your music lyrically, you, you definitely are there, man. Thank so you. it's just a matter of, let's see Proper how we can years, get yeah, you man. connected. I know part and, of what me and Hooker want to do mm -hmm. is unite people in North Carolina. And, and that's what a lot of a lot of people like the people we spoke of or uh, Josie Mo shout to him. I just mm -hmm. said on the same type thing. Um, and it was more like, I whatever I can do to help you make it, I will because you know this is dope. Like right. you're doing the correct shit. You know what I mean? And I respect the hell out of that. You know what yeah, I'm saying? And anybody who feels that way. The music that you hear <laughs> in other places now sometimes is very paper thin. You know what I'm saying? Like it's dope today. And maybe I won't like that shit next week. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, right. oh, I'll play it 20 times this month. Yep. But next year, if you play it, I'm going to hate that shit. You know what I'm saying? So right. I think we try to make the music that's, um, that has longevity and kind of can be deciphered Dope. later. I made you a Sudoku, nigga. You know what I'm saying? I made, I made you a crossword puzzle, bro. You know what I mean? Like, that kind of shit. Like, I think um, that's the goal. So when you say you listen to it. I mean, it has a, your music has a certain today, nostalgia to it. That's why I like it so much because it reminds me of Stop. the stuff I would have heard in the 90s that sustainable because everybody still love those artists. And that's the thing, you know? like, like how he's saying he, he turned that on, like, I listen to some old shit, bro. Okay. Yeah. okay. When you I get up in the morning, people, I can see those Absolutely. It's a powerful target to destroy the black market. Yeah. But when you say black, listen, I don't know you lose me. I guess another beggar can't afford to be choosy. I come to the maximum artist on the major label. Because that kind of that's, that's what it reminds me of that's when I heard it. I was like, always, this reminds me of these drums. drums these drums, drums always slapped at me. I feel really? Yeah, his drums are the best, bro. He had the best. And how'd you drums. get into? Uh, it seems like a lot of these artists now are gravitating to. Soundtracks like Boys in the Hood mm -hmm. and uh, other soundtracks. So how did you, um, the even higher learning when you had that uh, Lawrence Fishburne little mm -hmm. scene in there? Mm -hmm. I was like, yo. So you know, how do you, you know, when you're in the lab, uh, how do you get even get to that point and say, I'm gonna take a piece from here, I'm taking mm -hmm. a drum from here, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna take the sound bites from the movie because that's that's really unique. Yeah. Um. I think and like you said, like they do that now, like. We was on that shit five years ago. But that's all I'm gonna say. Yeah. But um, also though, like I think it's it's when you hit a beat, and and what you're deciding to write, sometimes certain emotions come from that. And also like, 
most artists, I, I can't speak for everybody, but we're big movie buffs, bro. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, there's not, you're not gonna name a movie I haven't, you know what right, I'm saying? Right, like, right. we watch a lot of shit, so um, whether it be an anime clip or, you know, some horror movie or Boys in the Hood or Higher Learning, like, I'm always watching something and, like, even if it's old and I've seen it a million times, I'll throw it on while I'm sitting burning or whatever mm -hmm. and um, mute it, turn the beat on and start writing because something I'm watching might have put this feeling in me or this expression or this idea and I, I'll mute the movie and throw the beat on, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So I think okay. it comes from those kind of situations. Okay, so we start adding. Well, one of the things we do, we dig into the crates. We got mm -hmm. about a collection of 300 albums. I keep buying albums every day. When mm -hmm. I look at albums, I look at the album cover. When you think about what we have here, um, if you can pick, pick them, you know, pick through them and go, just go through them and tell us about it. So one by one. Yeah. Obviously, Run DMC. Um, the first thing that comes to mind with me with these cats always is swag, bro. Like absolutely any, anything they wore <laughs> has left and come back four or five times, man. You yep. know what I'm saying? I just went and got the jean jacket the other day. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> or, or my man just went and caught some shell toes and that shit then went out of style, came back, left. You know what I mean? Like, yep. So the first thing that comes to mind with them always is going to be swag. Like, so automatic. Absolutely. Like, that, that's, Absolutely. That's, that's, that's A1 for me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Trends up type. Okay. Um, gangsta, I think gangsta, I think I mean beat. Um, just beat maker, rapper. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's the first thing that comes to my mind. Like, that, that set up with Premier and Guru was just mm -hmm. always fire. So when people bring it up, when they hear it, it's like, yo, I think it remind me of this joint, you know, this this gang star joint, you know what I mean? Like I'm always like, yeah, good, good, good. Yeah, yeah. That's the vibe we going for with them. So no doubt, you know what I'm saying? No doubt, no doubt. So where I'm at? Roxanne? <sighs> Queens get the money. That's the first thing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Queen, Queens come to mind because when I think of Roxanne, I think of Nas, I think of Queensbridge, you know what I'm saying? It's automatic, you know what I mean? Um yeah, it's the first thing. First thing. Right. It comes in my mind. Right? <sighs> my God. <man. laughs> ah, no yeah, doubt, man. Jazzy Bell, too. It's a banger, man. Outcast. Am I showing? Am I supposed to be showing you these shit? I can, yeah, I can flash it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, this is some personal <laughs> shit. Like, this is for me. This is for <laughs> Nah, um, Outcast, man, I'm from the South. We, we rap in the South. And, and there were rappers that rapped in the South. But, you know, the first thing that comes to mind is that, you know, the South got something to say. The South got something to say. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, Andre saying that is is always like the legendary line for me like, on some Outkast shit. So, no oh my God. Before we get into this album, mm -hmm. you know, talk, you know, did some work with, with drugs. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know too much about him, but. Shout out uh, to drugs. Shout out to drugs. Yeah. Uh, being that he worked with Dr. Dre, that's, mm -hmm. so, you know, if you can talk about that particular uh, album, you know, picture. Straight out of Compton, man. I know. Um, this is just fire, bro. Absolutely. Yo, this is fire, bro. So as I leave, believe I'm stopping. But when I come back, boy, I'm coming straight out of town. I might need a copy of this, my damn self, bro. <laughs> but yeah, um, the movie obviously is dope. And um, the first thing that comes to mind when I think of Compton, Dre, NWA now is drugs, man. Just knowing, you know what I'm saying, and being, and being close with him and working with him recently. And just knowing the connections and, you know, seeing who bangs his line or or whatever and whatever we're working on. Mm -hmm. um, always having another ear that's on the West Coast, like, hey, check this out. Y'all hear this? Like, what y'all think it is? And, and people being excited in California about music from some motherfucker from Burlington, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think that's always going to um, be a connection with that to me. So what stuff people. did drugs do on this one? Uh, uh, I, I got it right. Compton, mm -hmm. a soundtrack by Dr. Dre was released on Friday. Again, Raleigh native, uh, he, uh, Mez King Mez on the, and three tracks. But the song the song that he did on there was Dark Side. Oh, okay, I like Dark Side. Got a nice for the Bible, right beside that pot of white. That's what this life's like. Oh, you love your life. Now please don't give me a reason, reason. So let's let's get into uh, this Crown Royal album. Um, what, you know, what went to that album? Again, This I've never heard of Beats, but um, I, I watched uh, some of you posted, you know, sort of the backdrop of the making of the album. Mm -hmm. uh, but take us, you know, take us through the, the production of the album. Then I'm going to ask you about uh, 
track for one of those um, one of those featuring Boom Brown. Oh, uh, Boom Brown. I like to put it all on the table, cause and effect. It's all on the labels, all of them action X thought Disney could save you. We both know you always run back to the cage, oh, yeah. Love. Shout the book. Yeah. Okay. Um. um it was it was a sloppy beginning, you know what I'm saying? Like we weren't planning to do an album, you know what I'm saying? We just wanted to do a track. I was like, yeah, so maybe I'm, I'm in between projects. Me and B had just finished It's Not You Was Me, and he was working on Mercy Rule with Hill Pole. Shout out to them, very yeah, dope project. Out. If you haven't heard it, you know, go download. Yeah, that is a great dope project. Yeah. Um, and they were working on that, and it was more like typically drugs work with Hill Pole and me and B Square do music together, and we were all in the same camp, and we kind of swapped it out in that situation mm -hmm. just to kind of see what it would sound like and um he sent me the beat i did i recorded my portion of the track and um vanessa ferguson from you know from from the voice she was actually ends up on that song but i had that song done for like a year mm -hmm. and i was just sitting on it like, i don't know i don't even know if i like the song you know what i mean mm -hmm. and um we put it in the cut and uh about four or five months later he's like i'm seeing some beats man I, I ain't doing shit either you know what i'm saying like we should do something and um he sent me a few and I picked like one or two and we got to the point where we had about four songs and I was like, wait, okay, let me pull that other one out. Okay. All right, now we have like five songs. Well, shit, maybe we should just do an album. You know what I'm saying? It was right. one of them type of right. situations. So it kind of staggered into it, but once once we seen the direction and both sides seen what, what was going on, it was like, oh, okay. I know what we got here, you know what I'm saying? And we both understood that like, this could be that one. And track five, Anton Jackson. Yeah, in the A, hoping the Braves win it. Debate center around who could pin it the way pin it take place. Cue the schoolboy with the blank face. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, that's getting a lot of love right now. Um, obviously the the album is titled Crown Royal and initially is more of a Black Power statement type Crown Royal thing, but also how publicity or or, or uh, how marketing works. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, Crown Royal looked. A, looked a little bit more right. enticing than certain people, right. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, right. so we went in that direction, and at that point, we kind of started playing around with it, where there would be like, all right, this is the last batch, or give me one of these, or one of those, and we were naming songs in that fashion. Um, Anton Jackson is a character from one of my favorite shows in Living Color. I don't know if y'all ever watched that show. Yeah, yeah, I've heard Anton it's a Jackson, Dan Wayne's too. Character. My name is Anton, and this is my house slash bathroom slash kitchen slash backyard slash <laughs> like he, was a, he was a drunk on there like um Anson Jackson was the character he played it was a drunk in it it just kind of yeah the idea stuck in my head like yo yeah yo that's dope so um what's uh what's next what's next for you going on tour because this this ain't gonna be the last time we see because I'm gonna keep you know, <laughs> I'm gonna keep following you're the you. smartest man in America <laughs> like bro <laughs> Hit me up, bro. I I rock with you. You know I come through. You just got out. You gotta be persistent with me. I'll be on the move. You know what I'm saying? I understand but, um, that. <laughs> but um, October fourth, um, uh, Carborough, uh, we're at the Cat's Cradle. Okay. For the music festival. Up okay. There. Um, it's a virtual event for the Cat's Cradle, and uh, so many um local, just um platforms where artists can perform are really struggling. You know, with everything going on, so. We're just kind of trying to do anything we can to support and keep those venues yeah. doors totally. open and, and, and shit totally. like that. So, so yeah. when shit is over, we can have somewhere to go mm -hmm. rock. Um, period. Oh yeah, you. I'm gonna just throw it out because digging into the crates, we gonna we gonna sponsor some absolutely local show because uh, yeah. there's too much talent in this area. And again, like I said I'm growing up in LA. I didn't realize that in here you can reach out and. Mm -hmm touch people mm -hmm. and that's that's the one thing I appreciate and I know you on the move and stuff like mm -hmm. that and I always you know like tell people some, sometimes it's business then it's you know so when you go in the, in the studio you know hey you you're in there to you're in there to lock you know, it's in. art you 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 locked in and, and mm -hmm. you know so uh, so some of the younger younger artists that, that you see coming up mm -hmm. what, what kind of advice did you can give them um, just to kind of stay to you know, state of course, because you're in a place where you can only go up, but you may have had some rocky times, which that makes you stronger. So what can you... T take your lumps, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> At the end of the day, man, you got to take your lumps, bro. You know what I'm saying? None of this shit is easy. It, it ain't even really fun. You know what I'm saying? Right. At the end of the day, like... The grind is tough, The grind man. is tough, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Um, don't, don't come into it thinking it will be or, you know... 
and, and obviously, you know, some motherfuckers make one Instagram video and they're a millionaire tomorrow, you know what I'm saying? But like, how many of them motherfuckers have you met? You know right, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, right. That might just be a story, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, take your losses, man. Um, that shit builds character. Some of my best music comes after losses, you know what I mean? So Yeah, yeah. But yeah, man, this has been a, a ride today. Um Telling you, bro. Like, I brought y'all love some kind of love. Yeah, that's. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Let me get. I think I'm an alcoholic and no shit. Like, like <laughs> CDs. Bro. No doubt, yeah, no that's... doubt. Yeah. You see get it right out here. there. Yeah. See you it? heard it first. Digging in the Crazy Hip Hop Podcast. Crown Royal no OC doubt. from the NC. Uh, so how can people get at you on your your social media, bro? At OC from NC. Say the whole thing like a trap called quest on all platforms, bro. OC from NC or OC from NC.com. Um, music's on all platforms, Spotify, music titles, that shit. Man. Look it up. Yeah. Look, look it Check up. Us out, man. Yeah. Tap in. Again, right here, Digging and Crates Hip Hop Podcast, the hip hop wizard. Again, OC from NC. Sure. Uh, they're very delighted, but you know, one of the things we do in this show, we, we take it out with some words and inspiration. So I'm going to have my co host, Dr. Mack, to drop them. <laughs> Them droppers and gems, 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 give it to us, man, so we can jolt up out of here. I think I'm inspired by something that OC from NC said uh, a little bit earlier when he talked about that grind. Mm -hmm. And what it reminded me of is that those out there listening, remember that discipline is everything. Like, discipline will make you continue to do something even when it's not at its most enjoyable moment because you have a bigger goal in mind. So if you're really trying to accomplish something worthwhile, make sure that you are disciplined. And if you're disciplined enough, you'll get to wherever it is that you're trying to go. You so that's the word for the day. The that's word for the day is discipline. You heard it first. Digging in the Crates Hip Hop Podcast. I am your boy, the Hip Hop Wizard. Check out my mask and my boy, Dr. Mack. And we out. If you want to follow us, follow us on Instagram. Follow us on Facebook. Exactly. Um, if you want some uh, PR, uh, just get get at us. And uh, you know, you see my shirt, Hip Hop Wizard. And uh, we'll be we will be coming to a city near you. Um, so we out. We out.